Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including 2023 Model Y design changes, multiple Cybertruck prototypes in Texas, Tesla app updates, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, one of Tesla's design cues is their flush door handles. On the Model S originally, these handles popped out entirely on their own, whereas for the Model 3 and Y, they are flush but require you to push your thumb into the large part and then unlatch from there. Overall, they function fine once you know how to use them, but in very cold climates, they can end up frozen over. That means it's very difficult to open the door of a Model 3 or Y, and people often have to break off the ice on the handle to unlatch it. Up until now, this has really been the main solution, but now, just in time for winter, Tesla is pushing out a new app update. In Tesla iOS app version 4.14, they have added the ability to unlatch the driver's side door from the app. Here's a demo of what this looks like from Tesla Info, and you can see that the door simply unlatches, and you can then open it the rest of the way without needing to use the handle at all. This currently requires vehicle software version 2022.36, which not a Tesla app says about 35% of Tesla's fleet is on, so the rollout is still continuing. It's available in app via a new unlatch door icon icon on the quick actions. For now, that's the only place it exists, but I think it'd be smart for them to add it into the climate section of the app, as this is the time most people will be using it. At the same time, it's not something you'll want to accidentally do, so it's definitely a balance in the app design. Hopefully this helps out people in cold climates with frozen over door handles, and we should be seeing more results of this soon. In that same update, Tesla is also adding lock screen widgets. There are now two widgets you can pick from that show your Tesla's battery level in two different ways. This will be very helpful at a quick glance to see what your vehicle's current range is and if you'll need a plan for charging. Seeing this makes me hopeful that maybe a Tesla Apple Watch app could be coming soon. It's a highly requested feature that many would love to see. Next up today, over at Giga Texas, two Cybertruck prototypes have been spotted. These were reportedly delivered to Giga Texas, likely from Fremont, but there's a lot of speculation going on here. The current timeline for the Cybertruck prototype is 2023, which would require a lot of work and production ramping out of Giga Texas. Recently, Idra, the company making the 9,000 ton Giga Press for the Cybertruck, announced that they completed assembly and testing of that machine, but furthermore, reports showed it arriving at Giga Texas. On October 7th, it was rumored that the 9,000 ton Giga Press for the Cybertruck had arrived in Houston eight days prior. It then would start its journey to Giga Texas and could already be there by now. Because of this, many are speculating that these two Cybertrucks are the first test models built at Giga Texas with the press. In theory, this could be the case, but judging just how much time it takes to assemble all 54 pieces of this 9,000 ton Giga Press, it seems very unlikely. Most likely, these are validation units that Tesla will be using as the standard for new production out of Texas. Once the Giga Press is churning out bodies, they will be compared to these prototypes for quality. There's still a lot ahead for the Cybertruck, and a big question is whether or not Tesla's production is reliant on 4680 cells. They have been limited there, and the Model Y with 4680 cells has yet to ship at scale, so we'll see how that could affect Cybertruck production for 2023. Either way, the steps are coming together, and the machines to build the Cybertruck truly are being delivered and likely assembled at Tesla's newest factory. Next up today, as I've mentioned many times, Tesla updates their cars whenever they want to on the assembly line. They don't hold on to a model year schedule, and this time, Tesla is pushing out a few noticeable changes on the Model Y. Since the inception of the Model Y, we've seen a ton of small changes, but everything adds up to make this car much better over time. For myself, the most significant changes have been the ride quality improvements, noise improvements with double pane windows, the addition of the HEPA filter, the upgrade to AMD Ryzen chips for infotainment, and the addition of the cargo cover in the rear. The improvements in ride quality thus far have been undocumented. Tesla doesn't announce the small changes that they make on their cars and rarely talks about the big ones either, so I was pretty shocked when I took delivery of my 2022 Model Y. The ride quality was a massive improvement over the 2020 Model Y I purchased in March of 2020. I had heard from sources close to Tesla that they had gone through many suspension iterations, but now Elon has confirmed an official change on Twitter. He said, quote, standard non-performance 3NY suspension in production now has improved comfort without out affecting handling. It's great to see this confirmed because this is what I have experienced but had no word of the change from Tesla. Ride quality was the biggest complaint of myself and many others in the early Model Y, so now Tesla has officially updated it. It really makes a difference. As for the performance Model Y, they're keeping that suspension nice and stiff. And when asked, quote, can we get track mode for Model Y performance, Elon responded, this is harder than it sounds, but okay. All of Tesla's performance vehicles include a track mode, and considering the performance setup included in the Model Y, it makes sense to 
have it there as well. Now this update may be finally getting underway. It could be a long time before it releases, but I'm sure plenty of Model Y performance owners will be happy to see this feature released. Over at Giga Shanghai, Tesla has been more productive than ever, producing over 83,000 cars within the month of September. Likely due to their ramping there and various supply chain strategy, Tesla often makes vehicle changes in Shanghai first, even though Fremont is considered their main factory by many. Then we see them arrive on their cars produced in the US. This time, a couple changes have been spotted on the Model Y over in China. Quote, the length of the rear seat cushions on both sides has increased by 30 millimeters. The rear seat has added an emergency mechanical door handle. That should increase comfort at least a tad in the rear, but to me, the more important change is the updated manual door release. Here's a photo of what it looked like before, and it's much more obvious than it used to be. According to these photos, it was looking like you would lift up the door pocket organizer, press this, and the door would release. Here's a comparison of what it used to look like. In an emergency, if you were in the rear and didn't have knowledge of these cars, it very likely looked unrelated to latching the door and had no obvious place to lift this panel out. Now this has been updated in China and is much more obvious. After seeing this, I actually decided to go check out my month old Fremont built Model Y and sure enough, this is actually there as well. So people have first noticed this in China, but it's a change in multiple factories. This doesn't quite function like it may look though. This whole plastic piece actually lifts up and then underneath you have the pull tab. Pulling this is what unlatches the door. I thought and hoped that the red button there would be a pull button to release it, but it's really just a clearer marker. This is on both sides, so now on the Model Y, you can pretty easily release all four doors around the car if it loses power entirely. In my tests, this also rolled down the window as not to damage the trim since the vehicle had power. Again, with this update, you remove that door pocket organizer and then you pull up the plastic piece from the red tab and then pull the tab underneath that to release the door. So this change has been made across the board, but the seat upgrade has only been spotted in China so far. Here you can see the rear seats in a few photos of a customer delivery. It's pretty clear that the right and left seats have been extended a decent amount, adding a tad more leg support. Here's my Fremont built Model Y compared with the updated Shanghai seats. It's a pretty obvious difference. Over in the US, Tesla has yet to make the change to the model year 2023 on the Model Y, so I'm really curious if this is an upgrade that they will bring out with the 2023 model year. Usually they don't care about aligning things there, but the removal of USS sensors and the addition to the rear seats could be something that they are changing right at the same time as the changeover to the 2023 model year. They are already shipping the suspension upgrade, but now it is confirmed by Elon Musk. So if you're getting a new Model Y, the latest change to look out for is the upgraded rear seats. The cargo cover, updated rear seat emergency latches, and more are now standard. I'll keep you posted once we see those seat upgrades out of Fremont. Next up today, over at Giga Berlin, new reports are saying Tesla continues to have battery production issues. Tesla's long-term plan is to be making 4680 battery cells at Giga Texas and Berlin to then put in Model Ys built at each factory. The 4680 pilot plant has been running for some time now in Fremont, but Tesla's goal was to be in volume production of 4680 cells this year. Now, a report in Germany says that Tesla's plans in Berlin in particular are on hold. Quote, the fact that Tesla will not start full battery cell production in its German plant in Grunheide for the time being apparently has other reasons than lower energy costs and new tax incentives in the USA worth billions. Several sources close to the electric car manufacturer report a significant delay in a crucial but highly complex production technique. There were prior reports that Tesla was shipping equipment from Berlin over to Texas to ensure they focused on battery production within the US for incentives, but now it seems there is more to it. Their most recent reports say that only their electrode production machines will remain on site and everything else in place will be moved to the US. Reportedly, Tesla wants to focus on successfully deploying their dry coating in the US first. Quote, this is not a rejection of Grunheide. Tesla boss Elon Musk wants to continue to build a battery cell plant in Brandenburg in the long term. But before that, the electric car manufacturer has to get the so-called dry coating of the electrodes under control. A total of five experts, two of whom are close to Tesla, report that test systems with the technology are currently running quite successfully, but that implementation in large series is lacking. The dry coating is specifically the newest part of this technology, which Tesla has said is the main bottleneck, preventing them from achieving volume production right now. In past months, there have also been rumors that Tesla would be building the Model Y in Berlin using BYD blade batteries. Since Tesla is so focused on cylindrical battery cells, most assume that this wouldn't be the case, but if it is true, it could mean that Berlin has all the cells they need to ramp production, just coming from BYD. Then they can focus on 4680 cells in the US and work on Berlin's 4680 production long term. This is also 
speculation, but Tesla until very recently has always used cell suppliers to a degree. They work with Panasonic at Giga Nevada to make cells, use BYD, LG, and other suppliers, and this is what they know most. Making their own battery cells entirely in-house using new tech is new for them, so for the time being, their priority is building cars however they can. In Berlin, that could be by using BYD blade batteries, but we'll have to wait and see. Regardless, for the time being, it seems that 4680 Focus has shifted heavily to Texas and away from Berlin. Next up today, over at Giga Texas, Tesla is reportedly already expanding their paint shop. Joe Tegtmeyer is consistently checking out Tesla's Giga Texas with drone flyovers, and according to him, Tesla's paint shop has been making some changes. He tweeted saying, new permit for Giga Texas paint shop for connections to new modular paint system, an additional paint line being assembled, accompanying images to show the components that have been delivered and being assembled for reference. In the photos, you can see the permits as well as the equipment Tesla was installing for this purpose. Many speculate that Tesla's Giga Texas paint shop will include all the advancements Elon has talked about for Giga Berlin. We haven't seen Giga Berlin fully utilize its advanced paint shop much yet, but Elon has said that Giga Berlin will have world's most advanced paint shop with more layers of stunning colors that subtly change with curvature. Most recently when talking about Giga Berlin, he said, we're going to make a very special red, which I think probably a lot of people have seen. It's like 13 layers of paint. The layers give the paint dimensionality and make the color look deep and complex. And then we will also have a silver with not as many layers, I think eight or something. It's still going to be really special, kind of a liquid silver. For now, these paint upgrades should be for the Model Y and eventually the Model 3. The Cybertruck won't be painted. Next up today, after many reports of Tesla pausing hiring and laying off employees back in June, Tesla appears to be hiring in large volumes once again. Back in June, Reuters said that Tesla letting people go was partially because Elon had a super bad feeling about the economy. But Elon also said that Tesla is reducing the salaried workforce roughly 10% over the next probably three months or so. It's quite clear we expect to grow our hourly workforce. We grew very fast on the salaried side, and we grew a little too fast in some areas, and so it requires a reduction in salaried workforce. Now, only a few months later, it appears that Tesla is moving in the opposite direction. Quote, Tesla this week listed over 6,900 jobs on its career website, almost a 50% surge since mid-June when Reuters began tracking the data. That compares to a 2022 peak of over 7,400 job ads in May, according to data similarly tracked by Thinknum Alternative Data and hedge fund Snowbull Capital. As noted by Electric as well, that data doesn't include listings in China, where Tesla is consistently increasing job listings. The main places they are recruiting are in engineering and information technology, vehicle service, and manufacturing. They of course are also hiring in Texas and Berlin for those factories, continuing to work on service in North America, and ramping solar deployment as well. That's a lot going on at Tesla, and hiring is once again increasing. Next up today, some good news for general EV battery recycling. Battery recycling is a big concern for many with the advent of electric vehicles, but the real reason we don't hear about it all that much is that there haven't been that many battery packs in need of recycling at scale yet. They are mostly still in use by vehicles, but when they do need recycling, Tesla already recycles them. They recycle 100% of battery packs themselves that need it and say that, quote, the small number of post-consumer batteries that we receive are primarily generated from our fleet of vehicles on the road, predominantly from taxi-like vehicles. Since we've only been producing Model S, our oldest model, for a approximately 10 years, and our energy storage products for even less time, it will likely be some time before we start receiving back vehicle batteries in larger volumes. Other companies as well, like Redwood Materials, are diving fully into recycling, as in the coming years, this should prove a very large market. Very long term as well, it could mean that all EV batteries are produced with recycled elements, but another company has launched a large recycling plant in Alabama. Lifecycle says that they can process 10,000 tons per year, enough for 20,000 EVs, and their mission is to create an environmentally sustainable supply of critical battery materials to support the auto industry's transition to electric vehicles. At the end of an EV's life, the battery is turned into a black mass, which is then processed and used to generate nickel sulfate, lithium carbonate, and cobalt sulfate, all essential for EV batteries at this point. They say that they can achieve a 95% recycling efficiency rate. They already have three battery recycling plants in North America, and this latest will increase their capacity by a lot. This is great to see expanding from another company, and it will be very interesting to watch the business grow for EV battery recycling as that becomes more and more necessary. Tesla plans to increase their own 
recycling efforts, but I'm curious if they'll also end up partnering with companies like Redwood Materials or Lifecycle in a few decades when many batteries are at the end of their life. Last up today, some updates about other automakers. Over at Hyundai, they're quickly moving to assemble vehicles in the US. As part of their revised EV tax credit, final assembly in North America is required, and companies like Hyundai are already moving to be sure that they qualify. On October 25th, this very month, Hyundai is planning to break ground on their $5.5 billion EV factory in Bryan County, Georgia. It will be a 3,000 acre project and is expected to create around 8,100 jobs. Jeep just revealed specs for their Avenger EV. For now, it's only a European model, but it's pretty compact, will be produced in Poland, includes front wheel drive, and gets 249 miles of range WLTP. That's around 222 miles EPA, and pre-orders are starting now. It's definitely not a strong first EV from Jeep, but this is specifically for Europe only, and Jeep plans for 100% of their cars to be electric by 2030. They are introducing four new models by then, so hopefully those include more promising specs. Over at Fisker, they posted a teaser video of their UI. You can see the screen rotate, and then they demonstrate the screen in vertical mode with a few UI elements like climate, Spotify, range factors, and maps. It looks like they're taking a very similar approach to Tesla and many automakers these days, but it appears that this is a CarPlay integration with maps here, which many will be happy to see. Overall, it's a very small tease of their UI, but hopefully it means that they're one step closer to production of their Ocean EV. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the latest competition coming Tesla's way in 2024, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.